Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this prayer at the close of the day for Tuesday, the 24th day of November, year of our Lord, 2020. I do pray this finds you well this evening. And just a reminder that there will be church tomorrow night to give thanks as we come together on the, thank, on the eve of Thanksgiving. We will... Uh, have the service of prayer and preaching, doing all the neat things we normally have been doing over the last couple of months. Also, you'll be able to watch it right here at 6.30 tomorrow on Facebook Live, and it'll be shortly thereafter, it'll be posted on our YouTube channel. But again, I do pray this finds you well. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. The reading tonight will be from the book of Revelation, or just Revelation as it's called, singular, not plural. It is from chapter 21, beginning at verse 1 and ending at verse 8. It is the assigned New Testament reading for this day. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this heritage, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. And that is the word of the Lord. And just a couple of things about Revelation. This is the time of year in the daily lectionary that we read from, in particular, the back end of Revelation. We hear about the restoration of all things. And just a couple of words of caution about this book. First of all, as you heard me say, it's just one of my pet peeves. It's a singular revelation. The word is apocalypse. The Apocalypse of John, that's what it's called in my Greek New Testament. Uh, really, the first line is the Apocalypse, the Revelation of Jesus Christ. Anyway, the, uh, this, the genre of Revelation is what's called apocalyptic literature. And unfortunately, I think a lot of Christians gravitate, because it's mysterious, uh, they gravitate towards Revelation because it's mysterious and, it, and there's this crazy symbolism in it and you can you can practice what i call eisegesis i don't i'm the only one that calls it that that's when you read into the text instead of, instead of letting the text speak to you that's exegesis come you want the meaning to come out of the text and we all can be guilty of that as we use any biblical text but these in these apocalyptic literatures it's very it's easy to do because they're so symbolic uh, there was a time in the church where even pastors, priests, didn't didn't proclaim revelation, didn't really study it in great depth until they'd been a priest or a pastor for a while because it's so symbolic. And you really need to be familiar with the other apocalyptic literature, you know, in Daniel, in Ezekiel, um, and there's a couple of extra biblical writings also, uh, maybe some of the things uh, certainly that Christ says that talk about the last things and he says it very clearly and that's kind of our starting point what he says when he walked among us our lord jesus christ so be careful um you have to understand the genre it's like reading the psalms they're they're poetry 
so they're highly metaphorical. Uh, they, you know, of course, poetry often omits words and phrases, and you fill in the gaps. Context tells you a lot. That's a little more difficult in Revelation, letting context speak to you. And Revelation is also cyclical. It kind of keeps circling back on itself. It's not linear. And it's not a narrative. There are narrative bits in it, particularly at the beginning and a little bit here. But that narrative is bound up in all this symbolism. So please be careful when you read it or study it. And don't make that the place where you start if you're new to, to studying Scripture. Don't start at Revelation. In fact, people often well in, are well-intentioned. They just want to pick up the Bible and start reading. They make it through Genesis. You know, they might even make it through Exodus, and then they get a little bit of kiss. That's kind of where they stop. And then you, know, you get to Numbers, and that's really where you stop. Have a pastor that you trust and, and um, you know, have some training behind him, maybe help you read through Scripture and kind of give you the, the uh, history of it and the, uh, how it's uh, laid out. It's not, it's not collected for us in historical order at times. So just be cognizant of that. And be very careful. Now, this is what we hear tonight is, is from this little excerpt near the end of Revelation. Not quite the end yet. But we hear about what's to come. And it really is wonderful and comforting. And Revelation, as scary as it can be, is really meant for God's people to be wonderful and comforting. We hear about how he's protecting us. Oh, yes, bad things are going to happen. But in, in that, you know, we're going to be guarded. We're going to be protected. And, and then, you know, ultimately... What went wrong with the fall after our creation is finally restored. Our, our fellowship through Christ is fully restored. We are with God again. He is with us in, in a way that we can't know now. Now he's hidden. He has to be. He's hidden in the life of his church, in, in the proclamation of the word, and the sacraments. But we will finally get to see him. We'll get to see the Lamb, Jesus Christ the Lord, as he actually is fully exalted. And so we see a new heaven and a new earth. The, the, this tired old, old earth will pass away. The sea won't be any more. The sea is a metaphor for death throughout Scripture. You see the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from heaven. Remember, this is symbolic. It's, um, there are literal, literal aspects to it, but what it will actually look like is difficult to see. But the, the overarching theme is that we will be with God. God's people will dwell with God in, in the holy place, in the, in the holy city coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. That's what happens to us in our life in Christ. And it's language not only from the Old Testament, but places like Ephesians. We are, we are the bride of Christ. He is the groom. And then we hear the loud voice saying, the dwelling place of God is with man. That's how it should have been. That's how God intended it from the beginning. But the fall separated us. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. And then this wonderful promise, which has already been stated in Revelation, that he will wipe. And we see it in Christ as he walks among us. He's already doing this, that he's going to wipe away the tear from our, our eyes. Death will be destroyed. He holds it captive. He broke it open. He ha it has to do what he says, and eventually he will destroy it. There won't be mourning. There won't be crying. There won't, there won't be pain. Those things, which are things of this world, will have passed away. And then we hear, we hear the one, the Lamb seated on the throne. Behold, I am making all things new. Write this down. So we're reading it today. It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and last letter, Alpha and Omega of the Greek of the Greek alphabet. So there, he's always been, and there's nothing. You know, he is everything in between, the beginning and the end, everything in between. He is the eternal God. I get, to, and then we hear, you know, we hear about baptism to the thirsty. I will give from the spring of water of life without payment. We hear echoes of 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 Isaiah in that text. We hear echoes of Jesus with the woman at the well. Um, and then to the one who conquers, I will give this heritage. That's you and me in our baptism. It's you and me as we just live our lives confessing the faith, yes, in our weakness. And then at the end, this you know, wonderful, and don't think of it as a warning about you. You, you like me, remain a sinner's, sinner in this life, and you will struggle with sin until you die. We don't turn ourselves over to it. We struggle against it. We struggle against temptation. We fall very often. He's not talking about you because I'm certain. I don't. You know, you've probably told a lie. But scratch the word probably. You. You know, maybe it has been many, many years, but you told a lie. Um, uh, you've not trusted in God at times. It makes you an idolatry. You've run somewhere else to look for help. Um, uh, sorcerers. The word there is pharmakia. Uh, good arguments in the ancient church that those are the makers of potions, who. Uh, uh, 
uh, often it's associated with abortion in the ancient world. Paul uses that word, uh, the sexually immoral, it's damage to the body, and it doesn't mean that you've, you know, if you've committed sexual sins, and many, you know, Jesus says if you look at another woman you, uh, with lust, you're guilty. Well, that's pretty much all of us. Um, he's not talking about you. He's saying it in the New Jerusalem, this isn't going to be there. And those who give themselves over to these things and want everybody else to participate in these things, I don't know too many people like that, but they're out there. We, we're we aware that's in our culture. Not you. You're not you struggling with sin every day. These things aren't going to be there to harass us, to make our lives miserable, um, to create all the pain that we often experience in this world. It's all going to be gone. It's all going to be wonderful. Our rightful place with God, God's desire to be with us will be fulfilled and restored. That's what's coming. And as we approach the end of the church year, which is this weekend, and the beginning of a new church year, we're reminded of that. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, on this Tuesday night, we pray that you would strengthen us by your Spirit, that we might be delivered against temptation from the attacks of the evil one. We ask you to, to be with those who are caught in the grips of sin, uh, the despairing, those who are addicted and caught in the grips of Satan, for the tortured and the oppressed, those tortured by sin and those tortured by those who seek to, to suppress your light in the world, which cannot be done. We ask you to stand by them, forgive them, strengthen them, help all of us to stand firm in these dark and latter days. We ask you to be with those who are crying out, crying out to you for healing this night, for Haley, Penny, Gary and Karen, Tiffany, Carol, and all who call upon you. We ask you, according to your gracious will, to heal them. Be with the nurses and doctors who are caring for them. Be with those who are close to death, especially a friend of the congregation, Louis. We ask you to bless him uh, and uh, to keep him mindful of your love and your victory even over death itself and bless him and his family with your peace. Heavenly Father, we ask you to stay the hand of this pandemic. Uh, continue to, uh, uh, as I look at the data and I see the downward trends uh, increasing across our nation, we pray that that would continue by your gracious will, and that we'd finally be relieved from this great burden. All this we ask in the precious name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. Into your hands I commend myself, my body, soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm going to sing the last stanza of hymn number 677. There's eight stanzas in all. I will sing stanza eight. 677 for all the saints. From earth's wide bounds, from oceans far this coast, through gates of pearl streams in the countless host, singing to Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, 
Alleluia, Alleluia. Praise the Lord indeed. With that, my brothers and sisters, I bid you a pleasant evening and by God's grace, we'll see you tomorrow night. God be with you all.